So today we're looking at trouble code P0335 as well as 1336. They're both for the crankshaft position sensor. The only difference between the two is that with 1336, the ECM has detected that there may be some chipping where the signal plate is located, which is at the flywheel. But the procedure for both codes are almost identical. Now, if you're not exactly sure where the sensor is located on your vehicle, just do a quick Google image search, a web search, go to a website specific for your vehicle. You can often pick up quite quickly uh, different diagrams showing where the sensor is located on your vehicle. And of course, this will be listed on our website at carsandtoys.net under auto repair and in the trouble code section on the site. So now let me show you where the sensor is located on this vehicle. Of course now we're underneath the car. This is the transmission oil pan. This is the driver's side or the left hand side of the vehicle. And right here is where the sensor is located. This is the crankshaft position sensor. Now don't get confused. Some vehicles have more than one crank sensor. Yesterday we did an upload for a crankshaft position sensor reference. That's a different sensor on the other side of the motor. This is for the crankshaft position sensor POS. So again, just you may have to do a little due diligence for your specific vehicle because you don't want to be looking at the wrong sensor. So of course this is where it's located. Now before we remove this from the motor, I want to follow this wire. And if we take a look, the wire goes toward the top of the motor. Now that's a sub-harness up there. So what I want to do is a few tests at the sub-harness. We'll check for voltage, continuity, that sort of thing to make sure everything is okay regarding the wiring. So as you can see right here we have two connections. This is for the oxygen sensor. We're not going to bother with that. But right here this is the sub-harness for the crankshaft position sensor. So right here where my thumb is there's a tab. Just push down on the tab, pull on the body. They can be pretty tight. But there we go. This is the harness connector. Now if we take a look at this sub harness, it may be a little hard for you guys to see, but there are in fact four different prongs in here. You have number one, two, three, and four. Now what we're going to do is a voltage check. In other words, we're going to verify that power is getting to the sensor. In this case, you need a multimeter. If you do not have a multimeter, you can pick them up essentially uh, pretty much anywhere. I like to use Sears or Craftsman just because I've been using them for years. But Home Depot, Lowe's, they all have uh, multimeters. Now what we're going to do, let me just zoom out so you guys can see everything. You have two leads. Let me zoom out a little bit more. You have two leads coming from the multimeter. You have a black and a red. Black is your ground. That's any good metal point. And then the red lead, in this case, will go to terminal 4. That's the bottom right. Again, if you're not sure, just do a quick Google image search, a web search. You can often dig this information quite quickly for your vehicle. So what we're going to do is turn the ignition key to the on position. Don't start or crank the car. Just turn the key to the on position. We'll turn the knob to the voltage DC, that's for direct current. Take the red wire from the multimeter, in this case number 4. And we are getting battery voltage. So that verifies that power is indeed getting to this sub-harness. Now if you don't get a reading here, you either have a break between the sub-harness and the crank sensor. That's the sensor you just saw a few moments ago. Or there's a break between the sub-harness and a relay, in this case the ECCS relay, which is the ECM relay. So you really have to track that down. Also check the wiring, but usually this test really is to verify that this sub-harness is connected to that crank sensor. If everything looks okay with that test, now we're going to check power supply. We should see around 5 volts. Again, the ignition key is still on, but instead of touching terminal number 4, we're going to touch terminal 1, which is on the upper left, and we should see around 5 volts. And we do, we see 5.1. So that's working correctly. If you don't see a reading here, then you have a problem with the wiring. It's that simple. So just check all the wires, make sure they're all seated correctly, they're not broken, melted, cut, nothing. Make sure that they're in good shape. Now make sure you turn the ignition key off after you perform these tests. Now the next thing we need to check is for continuity. Continuity means two points make a connection. So the first thing is we need to 
change the knob here to continuity. This is the symbol you want. Whoop, there we go. That's the symbol you want to see. This guy right here. It's this audible looking symbol. And again, your black wire is still at ground, but we should hear an audible alert. That lets us know that two points are making a connection. We take the red wire, in this case terminal number two, which is the upper right. And as you can hear, we do have continuity. If you're not getting continuity, again, check the wiring back here. If the wiring is in good shape, check your engine ground points, which happen to be, in this case, these guys. If you're not sure where it's located on your vehicle, again, do a Google image search. You can quickly dig up where they are indeed located for your specific car or truck. But you want to make sure that these are not severed, they're not melted, these are not rusted. You need very good contact points in order to get continuity. So everything looks great here at the sub harness. So what we're going to do is reconnect it and then look directly at the crankshaft position sensor. So here we have the harness connector for the crankshaft position sensor. And we're just going to remove it here. There we go. Okay. So now we need to do the exact same test that we did with the sub harness. I know it's, it's a little monotonous, but you need to do these tests to make sure all of the wiring is in good shape. So if you take a look, we have three harnesses, or, or excuse me, we have three prongs. Number one, number two, and number three. So in this case, number one on the left, we need to see 12 volts. The middle, number two, we need to see five volts. And your last one, the third one, is for continuity. So I'm going to do this a lot quicker. And of course, red lead goes to the harness. Black lead from the multimeter goes to ground. Just touch any good metal point. Transmission pan in this case is perfect. Okay, so here we go. Again, you need to turn on the ignition key to the on position. Don't start or crank, just turn it to the on position. And then on this first guy, we should see 12 volts. We have 11.6, we're good there. This guy is five volts, which we're good there. And then turn off the ignition key touch number three and make sure that we do have continuity. So we're in good shape across the board. Again, if you're not getting good results here, check your wiring. Also make sure you have good ground for the multimeter. If you do not have good ground, you're not going to get accurate readings. That's 10 millimeters. And there we go, there's your crank position sensor. So now we have the sensor on the bench and you just want to do a visual inspection, make sure that the sensor is in good shape as this one is, and then look at the end. Make special attention to the end of the sensor here. If this part is chipped up, then I'm afraid you'll have a bigger problem on your hand. If you take a look, when you remove the sensor from the motor, now you have a viewing hole. If you take a look through that hole, you'll see the teeth to the flywheel, and if you see chipping, Unfortunately, you got to do uh, some more work because now you need to correct that problem. But that's what code 1336 detects, that now there's chipping along the sensor, the flywheel, and you need to repair and get the car going again. Now, if you've done all of these tests, everything looks good, then it's a very good indication that the sensor itself is bad. Now, there is one last test you can do if you do want to indeed verify that this guy is working or not working. What you have to do is re-plug in the harness connector, you turn on the ignition key, and you take a screwdriver. And on the end of the sensor here, it's magnetic. Now when you apply the screwdriver to the end, you take a reading at the ECM. Now the thing is, you have to find the exact terminal. In this case, it's terminal 85. So if I take a reading at terminal 85, I'll see five volts worth of voltage if the sensor is working. And then when you pull the screwdriver away, you should see zero volts. So five volts, zero volts, five, zero. And that's what you should see. You can do that extra step. In this case, I'm not going to do that just because I've done every other step before that. And I've had uh, success in every test. So to me, that just tells me that the sensor is bad and needs to be replaced.